Good morning. Good to see all of you again, and, and thank you for playing this morning. Uh, just two brief announcements. Uh, first, uh, this Thursday at 6 p.m., there'll be a, a group that's going to be in the parking lots to uh, assemble cleaning supplies and repair supplies for the people of Midland. So that's Thursday at 6. They'll be gathering little par care packages in the parking lot, and that's led by Nora Gorman. Also, we have an announcement about Mr. Phil Wargo, who we asked to be our eighth grade teacher. Dear St. John families, thank you for your prayers and support over the last two weeks while I deliberated the teaching position at St. John. After much prayer and seeking where the Lord would lead me to serve, I have decided to accept the position at St. John. The leadership, pastors, Mr. Walt and Mr. Bringold helped to bring direction and peace to my decision. I look forward to being part of the St. John community. In Christ our Savior, Mr. Phil Wargo. So praise be to God for that. We're not going to do a uh, handshaking, but you can now turn and wave to your Christian brothers and sisters.
This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord counted it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. Sits enthroned, he looks out. 
on all the inhabitants of the earth. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 4. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is from Luke chapter 16, and we will read this together. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you gather us together. What a a gracious and glorious thing this is. So often we have to confess we have taken for granted this community of saints, this communion gathered together to hear your word. But what a great thing it is to to be gathered again, to, to know that not only do we get to hear, but we get to be united physically here present with our brothers and sisters. We pray now that your Holy Spirit would do what you have promised and that he would make known to us Christ this day again in your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have more than 100 less people than we normally would at an 8 o'clock service. And after months of preaching to nobody, this feels overwhelmingly full. It's kind of funny how the senses do that to us, isn't it? The psalm we use for today is Psalm 33. It starts off this way, right? Blessed is the man whose God is the Lord, the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. You know, that is a a psalm that gets a lot of play with conservative Christians in our country, doesn't it? We hear that over and over again. We need to be a Christian nation. Now, I'm not disputing the need for Jesus ever. But what people are the people that are blessed? That's what we need to learn. The people that are blessed are the people God has chosen. In the Old Testament, when they talk about the blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, they're talking about the people of Israel, the nation that was ruled by Saul and David and Solomon. And then after the nation split in two, the other kings that would follow. That is who they are talking about in this psalm. The nation of Israel. For God had chosen them. Abraham, their forefather, had been called out of idolatry to follow the true God. And the people had been called out of slavery in Egypt. This was the people truly chosen by God. And what separated them from the other nations was their king was the creator. What separated them from other nations was the others would look to earthly kings. And in the power and the might of their armed forces, in the number of horses and chariots they had, those nations would depend. But the king of this world, of this nation called Israel, was to look to the God who made heaven and earth. They were looking not at the number of horses they had, but rather the one who made them, the one who created the nation, who created all nations. The other nations, well, as we chanted the psalm and prayed it together, the other nations were doomed for they depended upon earthly power. They depended upon their kings and the wisdom of their le- political leaders would give. They depended upon their false gods to be more powerful than the gods of the nations around them, though they all were simply idols with mouths that could not speak and hands that could not aid. The nations were doomed. For God is the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. See, that's what we prayed, isn't it? God, the true God, the King of Israel, the one whom the kings were simply supposed to speak for and act on behalf of, that true King of Israel had all nations under his control. While men like to think in this world that we have our control, we like to think as people that we can find our own ways and our own paths, that nations can negotiate themselves to keep themselves from extinction. God, he had the nations under his control. Blessed is the people who have God as their king. For he has chosen them. And it's not the other way around. 
The people of Israel did not choose God. God came to them, rescued them. He came to them with a covenant, and the people simply bowed before what was important. The word of God had come to them. Well, the nations were all doomed, and one by one they would fall, right? Moab, Edom, they would fall because God was in charge. And when the people of Israel were abandoning their king, their God, well, Assyria would come in, and Babylon would come in, and they would destroy those people. And yet, those are long-forgotten empires, aren't they? Those are empires that have risen and fallen. For they are not in control. Our God is. But the people of Israel fell. They abandoned their God. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Who is that? I'll tell you who it is. It's the people of God. It's the people redeemed and made into a holy nation. You see, the word that is called nation there, it can be translated from the Hebrew, not just as nation, but the people. The people gathered. And that was exactly what God explained to Israel when he called them out of Egypt. Once you were not a people, but now you are a people. Once you were not a nation, but now you are a nation. You see, the nation blessed, the people blessed today is not the Israel of old, of course, because they don't exist, nor the Israel of today, for they do not yet see the fulfillment. You can support that nation if you want to politically. I don't care. But it's not the people of God, for they know not Jesus. No, the people that are blessed, who have God as their Lord, no, those are the people you and me. The people this psalm is talking about are the people who know Jesus Christ. The people of God, the people chosen by God. It's not talking about a nation with borders. It's talking about the communion of saints. Not just the people of St. John, but the people throughout the world and of all time. There is the people. For once we were no one, but now we are. For God has called us out of the waters of baptism. He has called us from the slavery of sin. He has delivered us through our own Red Sea called baptism and destroyed our enemies. Not Egyptians, not the rulers of this world, but the ones who take over our souls. Sin and death and the power of the devil. And that power of the devil is great for it works in fear. It works in the ways to scare us of the things of this world, to make us feel like they're ultimate. But in the waters of baptism, the Satan and his tools were destroyed. God called us out of those waters of baptism. Even as he said to Jesus, you are my beloved son, he has called us and said, you are my beloved one. And he names us as his sons and his daughters. We are the people of God who are blessed. We have the Lord as our God, our Lord Jesus. For these, we have been chosen out of this world. And we have been made a new nation and a new people, not bound by the borders of our hearts, our minds, or our nations. That is so important. That's why Paul keeps saying things in his letters like there's neither Jew nor Greek because those things no longer matter. Paul says to a group of Gentiles in Ephesus, once you were Gentiles, but now they're not. They weren't Jews either. They were the children of God belonging to God. What Paul says is simply this. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither black nor white. There's neither American nor Chaldean. There's only the people of God that has been formed. That's what Peter teaches too, right? We are a chosen nation. A nation of royal priests. People who once had no mercy but now have received mercy. 
We are the blessed. And the gift we have is not the gift of power of the world. But we have the gift that we have been chosen by God. And our God is the Lord who died on the cross to save us. Our power, if we want to think of it that way, is the word of God. For there Christ works. There Christ works to change hearts. There Christ works to change minds and behaviors. And there we find our blessing. It may not be in the way the world thinks, but think about the words of Jesus. Who are blessed? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who recognize that we live on the grace and the mercy of God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for Jesus, for his gifts that he gives in righteousness, that we might be the people of God. Blessed are those who weep over sin and injustice, that we ourselves have perpetrated and that we ourselves see in this world. Blessed are those who find their comfort, their hope, and all things in Jesus Christ. Who's blessed? Who's this new people of God? It's the brothers and sisters of Jesus. It's you and me. And so we are citizens not merely of the United States, but we are citizens of God's kingdom. Paul says our citizenship is not of this world, but we have a different citizenship. When I was living in Sheboygan, it was, Sheboygan was a very, very Germanic community. Okay, uh, If you've never been there, you go there and you hear teenagers sounding like they just got off the boat. Okay, uh, Judy and I laughed about that until we realized we didn't hear it anymore and we thought maybe we sound the same way now. That's the way it works there. But I had this one little old couple in my congregation. They had immigrated from Germany in the 50s. When I would drive up to their house to take them communion, it looked like something out of a book of a picture in Germany. The flower boxes, the flower gardens, all these things that made you think you were in Germany when you walked to that house. And then I'd walk in, and you could tell they were from Germany. It was a, something that was remarkable to me. They had citizenship in America, and yet so much of their thought and ways of acting were basically foreign. We might live in this world, but we belong to the kingdom of God. And what that means is this. We live in repentance and faith. We don't get too big for our britches. We remember who we are. When we have valued political solutions and parties and ideologies more than Christ, when they influence our, pol our politics, influences our thinking about God more than our thinking about God influences our politics, that's when we bow down in repentance, knowing that we have forgotten to whom we belong. When we value people groups more than we do the communion of saints, which is made up of every tribe, nation, and language, then we bow down in repentance. And we find in Christ our forgiveness, our life, and our salvation. What it means is we live in love. We live in love to our neighbors, to the people around us. That sounds so simple, but it is so hard because we live in a world that is so conflicted about everything. We have immigrants around us, and so hard to, to simply to, to mark them off and hold them at a hand's distance, even as they're fleeing the persecution of their own countries. But we live in love to them, even if we don't completely understand them. It means we live in love to the people of different cultures and ethnic backgrounds, even to us if it's as strange as the man on the moon. It means we care. We fight for the things that are right. For what it says in Proverbs, 
as the child of God fights for justice. You see, what it means is we live in confidence, but not in the confidence of this world's powers and the confidence of this world's politics. We live in the confidence of the one who made this world, who is our help and our shield. We live in confidence knowing that we belong to Christ for he died for us to kill the old Adam with its sin. We live in confidence because we know that the one who is our king, who is our ruler, is the one who holds all things in his hands. What a beautiful confession, isn't it? Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. What a gift, for we are that people. You are that people who are blessed. But you are not blessed simply because you live here in the United States, and that is a huge, great blessing God has given us. You are that people, though, because God has chosen you that God has made you his own. You are the blessed people of God because you have been brought into the faith. You have been washed. You have been cleansed of sin. You have been made the people of God. And that is your confidence. And that is your blessing. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. And we worship the Lord now with our offerings. Please bring them forward as we did last week. We stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father, you have blessed your church, your chosen people. We thank you that in Christ we have so many brothers and sisters, so many that we can rejoice in your word. Father, give us repentant hearts. Give us faith towards you and love for others. And teach us ever to rejoice in this nation where you have called together those from every earthly nation and tribe and language. And Father, we long for the day where we'll all sing your praise together in eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father, we ask that you bless this congregation here at Fraser. We thank you that Mr. Wargo has accepted the position to be our eighth grade teacher. And we ask that you'd bless his ministry richly, not only uh, teaching the normal subjects, but teaching Christ to the children, that all that come to this place might hear your gospel and believe and be saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, bless our homes. Be with all marriages. Be with children. Let your word flourish in our homes that we might always remember that we are citizens of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the United States and for the state of Michigan and for the city of Detroit. And we ask that you'd watch over these places for the good of your church. Where there has been injustice, we pray that you would bring about justice. Where innocent people are in danger, we ask that you would protect them, that you would thwart the plans of wicked men, and that you would bless those who seek to do good. Be with all those in authority, that they might use their authority for the common good and for the equal treatment of all. And we ask that in all things, your gospel might be proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, bless the sick, including those we now name in our hearts. Father, we ask that you would heal them according to your will and that you would keep their minds focused on your Son. We also pray for those who are lonely and isolated, for those who are depressed or who are experiencing um, different mental difficulties. We pray for those who are dying and for all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing, grant us your grace that we might keep your commandments, that we may please you in both will and in deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.